I was having coffee with a childhood friend of mine who wanted to know if they could afford a house. Well, the conversation went from, can you afford a house to, boy, you've never even a freaking budgeted a day in your life. Turns out my friend has lived his existence, his entire, what, he's almost 30 at this point. So let's say 12 or 13 years of being an adult, basically making money, spending it. Some months they can save more money. Some months they can spend a little more money. It's easy to judge people like this, but let's be real. A lot of us sometimes fall into this trap. Like there's only a very small percentage of people that actually live their life using a budget. So this video is dedicated to my childhood friend, but also anybody out there who could need a refreshing, right? This is a very beginner course on how to start saving and how to start a budget just on your own, whether you're saving for a down payment for a house or just wanting to get your life together. So maybe your parents will love you. Sorry, my, my, my therapy comes out in these videos sometimes a little bit too much. All we're gonna need is a paper and a pencil, or if you wanna be a little more tech savvy, just a blank spreadsheet, just a Google sheet or using an Excel sheet. Follow along in today's video and I promise you, you're gonna have a basic fundamental understanding of how to start budgeting for yourself. And if you guys like this video, we can start kind of going into deeper stuff and making cooler budgets and whatnot. So let's see how it goes. All right, so now here we have a blank spreadsheet. Uh, just like I said, this is all we need to get started. The first step that we need to figure out is we need to figure out what your survival number looks like. What well, we're going to start off, or what I recommended CJ to do, and maybe you want to do as well, is let's just start off by writing down all of our fixed expenses. Fixed expenses means expenses that are fixed. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Basically anything that's predictable, anything that is that sure is about the same amount, it's taking a certain time every month, and it's something you can count on being spent. As you remember what it is, just write it down. So on the first of the month, which you write in one, CJ pays rent for $2,000. On the fifth, he has a gem membership taken out, and that is approximately $60. So now I'm gonna be writing this down as I'm going, but you could just literally from the top of your head, start kind of thinking about what things are and you type it in. But what might help is if you just pull out a bank statement and just start going through like with a highlighter, or if you're looking at it on paper, just looking at it and saying, okay, that's a fixed expense, that's a fixed expense. You might have a utility like I have here that might vary. So uh, you basically get a um, like range of what it usually is. Obviously aim at the higher side most of the time. So it's always better to over budget for a utility instead of under budgeting it. And if you're wondering how I'm getting all these numbers, I literally had to just write it down on a, a pen and a paper or a pencil and a paper when we were having that coffee. So he has all of his stream. It's not just Netflix, it's like all of his streaming. So let's call it streaming. So for credit cards, all you're gonna do is you're gonna write down your minimum payment. Um, so for him, it was 50 and it was 80. Now what I want you to do, if you have a statement, maybe you can just calculate this yourself, but I want you to also basically like figure out what you spend for groceries and for gas approximately. A grocery gas and, and dining out. Um, you could give me a monthly amount for now. If you wanna be really cool, you can actually break it down into two. So he spends $300 in groceries a month, according to his estimate. So we can break it down one in 15, groceries 150, and on the 15th, 150. Same thing for gas, uh, we're gonna do one in 15. Uh, we're gonna just put his estimated gas number he gave me, which is $200 a month. His dining out was a little bit atrocious. If the list couldn't get any bigger, we're also gonna write down our income. So basically here, all these are expenses. You can also put out, if it's a more simple, basically carry that down. So we have all of our expenses. Um, now for our income, uh, we're gonna have, write down our income here as well. He gets paid two payments on the first. He gets uh, he has two roommates that not only split the rent between three ways, but they also give him a little more for, for the utilities. So they give him about $800 each, so it's about 1,600. So he, from his roommates, he gets about 1,600. He gets, uh, he makes 3,800. So he gets one on the first for 1,900. So we'll call it job income, 1,900. There you go. So and we'll call these ends. There's a method to the madness, I promise. So we have everything down there. This first list is just to get it out of your head, put it down, right? We're not doing, we're, we're gonna be working with this, but it's okay if it's not perfect, but just try to get every fixed expense on there. Right, so we can be more predictable. Obviously writing things like dining out, gas, grocery, stuff like that, but things that are essential, write them down here. Like if you're you're so obsessed about coffee and you spend a certain amount per month, write it down here. Like budget it for the first, you have a coffee budget, you spend, you spend like $300 a month, write it in there. Like um, obviously you can break it out if you wanna be more you know intense, but just really get all that in. Now, what we're gonna do is we are going to categorize them. So we'll call it day of the month name of the expense, 
amount and type, right? You can name these whatever you want. You're making your own here. We're going to highlight all of it. We'll maybe leave like an extra five spots in case you remember there's other things. So, and then for Google Sheets, we go here and we go to uh, create a filter. We can even make it look nice and pretty by going here, format, alternating colors, making like a nice, I don't know, blue or something. There you go. And now we have our like our master list of everything going in and out. We can actually then arrange it from one to 31 and we have a good idea of what's going in and out here, okay? So from here, we can get a good summary of just what our total expenses are. So let's create just a little table here, we'll call it our total table. We can actually put a row above here. Let's label this. I like to label our tables by just like maybe getting a little section there making a little thicker lines there. We'll call this our master list. Call this one right here, our total, okay? Expenses, income, leftover. So for this, we're gonna use um, some if formula. So just follow along here as best as you can. So we're gonna do some if basically this range says out, and then we're gonna do another comma, and then we put the range that it would add it. Now, basically, it'll add anything that says out. And we're going to duplicate this formula. We're going to put it right here. And we're going to put in here. So basically, anything that says out, we add here. Anything that says in, we add here. Pretty simple, right? Our leftover amount is basically going to be our income minus our expenses. And there you go. Everything's just out of our brain and on paper. Okay. From here, we can figure out what our survival number is. We can figure out a few other factors. So why don't we do that now? So we have our totals. So our survival number, in my opinion, is essentially anything you need to absolutely survive, like your your wants, not your needs, not your saving goals or anything like that. Is if, if it was crunch time and you need to just survive, this is a number you would use. So now to figure this out, we're going to use something called the 50, 30, 20 rule in budgeting. So essentially the budget I'm teaching you today uh, or a taught CJ or that I'm now teaching you is we're going to use two ideas. School two was the thought the 50, 30, 20 to get a good idea of format or like structure. And we're going to use zero based budgeting to accomplish our goals. So to kind of break down each one, 50, 30, 20 rule essentially is you break down your budget into three different categories, like three slices of a pie. 50% goes to your necessities, 30% goes to your wants, and 20% goes to your savings and debt. 50% of your necessities is basically going to things that you cannot live without. Your home, basic utilities, food, basic transportation. 30% goes to the things that make life fun, but they're not necessary. You eat dining out, your movies, entertainment, video games, um, your streaming services, you know, the, the clothes and shoes and whatever habits you have that you're indulging in. And your 20% savings of debt, this is going to basically build up your wealth. This is your, your savings, your future goals, you're paying off your debt and, and things of that matter. So in a perfect world, we're gonna follow these rules and we can break down using just kind of getting idea here our goals here so our goals necessities to make it a little easier i'm just going to do like a, just a little reference column there another word for necessities is needs so i'm just going to use needs which is easier wants and your goals right so that's the goals that we're, we're striving for um so we can actually since we know what 50 30 20 we can just find that out by going this number multiplied by your income, because your income is basically what we're basing everything off of. We can also find out your want number. This is the goal that we should strive for, income. And your goals, this number multiplied by your income. So we have the ideal pie here, based off your current income, how it should look like. So in theory, 2,700 should only cover your needs. So now let's actually figure out where we are. We're gonna do our needs. We're literally just gonna copy what's the structure there. And if you did everything correctly, we should just be able to just like, that's our need, copy, paste it. Groceries, gas. All right, so now I'm gonna go really quickly and, and pick out the things I determine as necessary. And there it is. Um, I just picked out all the things that I felt necessary. I didn't put gym, I know it's controversial. A lot of people might think gym is a necessity, but this is just kind of just what I'm going on off the cuff. Um, we're gonna add a total at the bottom. So let's do, uh, let's leave a little spaces in case you ever add more stuff. Total, and let's do a quick sum. And then we're going to include all of these right here. 
So you could say that you, you shouldn't include the whole $2,000 amount, but I'm in doing it because A, that, that money that the roommates are giving you are considered income. In this case, my friend, he's the, he's the one that, like name on the lease. So if like they ever bail on him, that's like up to him to come up with that money. So I'm considering that as income. If he's just budgeting for like what he's actually paying, with eight hundred dollars or whatever. Um, I don't know. I'm looking at, like he's the head of household and he's earning money from these people and they're just going to pay pay everything, right? So the total amount that he's actually spending is thirty four ten. So if we actually make another column up here, we'll call it actual. We can actually hit equals and then we'll hit this number so that way it, it summarizes it. We can see that he's actually was at seven hundred dollars over that amount. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a little space here and then I'm gonna figure out. Okay, what is, what is his actual percentage? So I'm gonna get this number divided by the income. I'm gonna make that into an actual percentage amount. So it's actually 63% of his income is going towards survival. Listen, it is what it is. This is just the way things have laid out. Can I have him reduce his Honda? Can I have him reduce his power, his water bills, his groceries, his all of this stuff? Yes, we can have that. We can have that conversation for sure. I am just the point of the first part is just to figure out how things are looking like right now we could do this for our wants and our goals right now but for now let's just base it off this because remember our first step is still to figure out the survival number so if this is what he's actually making to survive then what we can do is we can multiply that so let's go top goal number one three months survival we get this number which is what he's actually needing to survive we multiply that by three and that's the amount that he needs to save. So the first things first that I would put on the agenda is we need to have him save $10,230. Just, you need that survival, you, you need that man. You just need that in your bank. So whatever your survival number is, saving three months is so essential. Just, you'll be able to sleep better at night. You'll be able to live more comfortably, make better decisions. Like if your job is like doing some BS things to you and making you do all kinds of crazy stuff, you can always say, hey, I have three months in my bank. I could survive off of three months. So if I need to go switch to another job or something, I can do that. I can I can transition successfully. So we know an idea of our three month survival note. So. How are we gonna reach that? Well, first and foremost, let's find out what his current situation is. Once again, don't have all the data yet. We're still figuring things out. I'm hoping on his own, he starts fun to figuring this out a little better, but let's just kind of do what we have right now, right? Because the thing is the pie will always add up to 100%. If it doesn't, that means you're spending more than what you're making somehow probably using credit cards so careful there but anyways the pie should add up to about a hundred so let's determine what's going on with the wants and the goals so i'm going to clean this up and move this over here i don't think it's necessary yep so we're just going to be like that so let's do a quick one for wants and now i want to go and essentially put everything else that was in there so for sure so dining out coffee gym streaming and as I'm doing this, I'm realizing the credit card technically shouldn't be here. So let me get rid of that so that all that should be adjusted. So that is now the new goal. So um, just so you know, uh, we are going to move those there. So then basically our total, I think there's a lot missing for the wants. There's like a video game Pokemon card collection that he has. Um, there's a bunch of things that maybe he doesn't budget for, but he spends money on. I think if he gets the last two or three months, he gets an average of that stuff. I'm pretty sure this is a lot more extensive. I don't know how much he's spending for video games, but let's say he buys maybe two games a month. I'm gonna add that there. We'll just do like one on one and put some video games. We'll do, let's say it's like, they're $70 now. So it's like 140. So we'll call that an out. So that way it should automatically add if I cut out. Yep, I added it over. Pokemon cards, I mean, I don't know how much he's spending, but I'm assuming it's like $100 a month. That should adjust everything. Perfect. Cool. Alrighty then. So we're gonna add those there. Gonna leave a little space. Gonna do a total equals sum. Add all these. About a thousand dollars. Nice and easy. Now, according to this, you're actually spending less on that amount. Interesting. So we're gonna move this over. Put this right here. Let's put a line dividing. So we're gonna do like a left line. Make it like thicker. So that's equals that amount. For this, we're going to do this minus income percentage, move the periods over, move the period over there. So you're spending 18 and a half percent of your income on wants 
and 60% is going towards needs. And for the third category, which we'll call goals, which is basically your uh, savings and debt, we know for a fact you're paying this as a minimum payment. So we're gonna put that in there. So basically all of your goals or saving, but right now we're just gonna use $130. So now there's a little difference here. So if we look at your goals of what you're actually, your pie, right? Your 50, 30, 20, there is $5,400 of income you're receiving. And according to the expenses that you're I'm given, keep in mind, I think there's a lot of things missing, but let's just kind of pretend this was exactly everything being spent. There is $890 that are just missing, right? So that's being used somewhere. That's being used for more Pokemon cards, it's being used for more video games, that's maybe he is increasing his savings some way or somehow, that money's going somewhere. So what we're gonna do, and this is why that we're gonna use zero-based budgeting to accomplish our goals, because with zero-based budgeting, you give every dollar a job. You allocate all of your income until there's no money left. If you overstate, overestimated one category, then you need to decrease in other categories. Everything balances out to zero. So if this was truly the budget, then we would have to actually put like savings goal and we would type in $890. That will equal 5,400 and that is truly a zero. So if we add this to the master list, so let's say it wouldn't, it wouldn't necessarily be, um, maybe you do save it all up front, maybe you separate it into two. So on the, on the first, you do half of it, on the 15th, you do half of it, but let's just say you do it all in the first. Um, essentially, then it should be zero, right? Because every single piece of expense is accounted for, including what you're saving. So it should essentially match to zero. So obviously we, we can look and, and adjust some things here, right? Because 890, if, if you are truly only saving that, we can actually go here and we can just do a little quick math to figure out how many months it would take. So if you're saving 890, we're gonna type months here, okay? So if you're saving 190, how many months would it take to save uh, $10,140? All we'd have to do is divide the bigger number with the smaller number and we get how many months it would take for you to save that. So if you're following this budget meticulously and you only are saving $190, it'll take you 11.4 months. And this is where it gets exciting. Let's say we can find somewhere else to squeeze these pies a little smaller, right? So let's say we can go and just completely remove some of these wants do what we can to reduce like maybe it's been a while since you got a quote on your auto insurance and let's say we can reduce that so you can reduce that to like 150 dollars okay let's say we can take 50 dollars out there i don't know you get really meticulous with your power or maybe you charge your now we're getting that act goal that actual goal number down right and now i don't know let's say you can charge um <laughs> i'm not trying to come up with any ideas here but let's just say you can get your roommate to give you hey guys i'm gonna need a little more from you you know get an extra hundred dollars from each one you're dining out right you can cut it in half so it's 75 75 so you save total 150 dollars Right. So basically, so by just by doing all those little calculations, I was able to squeeze out another $450. So in theory, we could then bump that up, right? We can say we can bump up our savings goal by 450. Or if you want, you can do a separate savings goal. Like maybe you want to invest that and you would put like a general investment fund or something along this line. But let's say for this, for example, we're just going to add that to our savings. So that would increase it to 1340. So that should equal out to zero now. And then we add uh, the 1340 here to the savings goal. And now we're getting there, like 58%. Uh, this is still a little high, but our, our goals number is higher. That's totally fine. This is just like a general idea of where we wanna be, but you know, our, we still need our needs to be smaller, but our wants are smaller, but our goals are bigger. So it's like, okay, you're not perfect. You're not 50, 30, 20, that's fine. But now if we can apply 1340 instead of 890, now it's gonna take us 7.3 months to reach that goal. Let's say you can find like a part-time job or squeeze some extra hours at work. Um, he can somehow come up with like another, I don't know, thousand dollars just while he's like really trying to figure things out. Okay, so then that thousand dollars there's left over so we can apply that over to our savings goal, 2340. Um, now that's a zero, great. Now we move this to 2340. Now we move that to 2340 and we move this to 2340. Now we're at 4.2 months, okay? Our actual, like, because we increased our income, um, we're at 50% needs, 13% uh, wants, perfect, 20% um, goals. Now, this is like if you're aggressively trying to save. I, you know, 
Thirty percent wants that's there, it's there for a reason. You know, you don't want to just go be miserable because you're gonna you're gonna be depressed and all these things, right? So take care of your mental health or go do something that you enjoy doing. But if you really hunker down for four point two months, my friend can get out of like whatever situation he's in and get that three month survival. Now, once he gets that three month survival number, the top gold number two I recommend start paying off your debt. Okay, so let's say he starts. Um, aggressively tackling down that debt. So he has two credit cards. I think it was like one was a, um, we can just create a little like, kind of just move this to the side. Let's say he has uh, another goal. So top goal number two, pay off credit card number one. Okay, number one is at the $50 one. I think he has a monthly uh, total balance. Where is it at? Right here. That was like a balance of like 5,200 or something like that. So we're going to, let's make this smaller so it fits. Let's do, was it 5,200? Okay, so now let's assume you can continue to still save twenty three forty and live the life of a perfect monk. Like you're, you're you're on top of things. Okay, how many months would it take to pay off that credit card? Well, you can do this, this divided by this, two point two months. You can get that credit card paid off. Okay, so then let's say you do another goal. That other one was like nine thousand dollars or something. We can make another one, but for time's sake, let's just do it here. That'll take you three point eight months, right? So do you guys see what I'm what I'm look showing here? So within a year, year and a half, he can get his three month savings up. He can pay off both of his credit cards. He could even make it a goal to pay off his car. It's just because he's not in a position to afford a house right now. Which if I'm just doing like a quick at a glance, I'm gonna look at what he qualifies for. I'm gonna look at what he can afford. His net income right now for not including the roommates, it would be, you know, well, you're not using a part-time, just that, it would be, what was that, 3,800? Okay, so with 3,800, let's say we get 30% of that, technically he can only afford about $1,140. Now, yes, he could bring his roommates and continue to get that as an income, and he can squeeze his way into home ownership if he really wanted to, but what if, while he is figuring out like the market and the market's adjusting, the rates are dropping, whatever's happening with the market. He takes the next year or two to really get all this in line, get his savings up. Not only save the three months, what if he goes to four months or five months or six months, pay off his credit card, pay off his cars. Like really, this is the stuff that excites me because people think home ownership is the only obtainable thing for them, but there's so much little micro goals that you can accomplish before you even get there. That'll probably put you and your family in a much better position than you just having a house. Okay. Having a house is great. Don't get me wrong. I'm a real estate agent. And I'm, it's the biggest blast for me, for me and my family, for me to tell you don't buy a house because that's basically money coming out of my kid's mouth. But I would rather give you good advice and tell you, Hey, maybe there's other things meaning you being you and of course my friend, go figure that stuff out. Take the next year or two to really settle down. Who knows what prices might go up. They might go down. That's totally fine. But you yourself are going to be stronger, a stronger buyer. You're going to have a much better financial situation. So whatever is going on with the market, you can actually be put in a good and great position. So now there's a lot more things we can talk about. Like we can talk about the zero based budgeting and how to like what to do when you get a paycheck and how that works and, and break it down that way. I can show you guys how I do my things with multiple businesses. Um, I could even share with you guys my favorite budget software, which does this all for you that would be you need a budget.com like i use this and it's a really easy way to do zero based budgeting and you can like do different categories and we can do the 50 30 20 and like th there's so much cool things you can do by the way i, I do kind of have to plug this um they're not a sponsor but I, i'm an affiliate there's a link below and if, if you want to get started with budgeting and you don't just want to do a spreadsheet you want to spend a little bit of money you can use my code and get a free trial for a month and then you can try it out and if you like it you can you know basically sign up so if i brought any value to you you would bring a lot of value to my life if you just do go sign up and try them out for a few months and that'll help me of course but anyways i I know I'm not known for the budget stuff and more for the housing stuff, but I would appreciate any kind of feedback or anything you have if you like this kind of content. Because honestly, right now with the home housing environment the way it is, I think the conversation is not going from, hey, what do we need? What kind of loan per action? How much do I need for a down payment? I think those conversations are not going to, when am I, when is it the right time to buy? Like, when do I know like financially how my budget should look like before I buy and stuff like that? So thank you guys so much for your time. I appreciate every single one of you. YouTube thinks you should watch this next video of me. Once again, if you guys can go sign up for you need a budget.com if you're looking for that that would greatly help and of course like and subscribe and do all those things thank you guys appreciate you bye